Thank you very much. So I'm excited to play the Dipsy Children's Corner for you this evening, um, because my teacher, when I was young, would not let me touch Dipsy until I was 15 years old. He thought it was way too hard for anybody to um, approach because it requires so much world experience. Dipsy's music is fabulous because he's not interested in projecting emotion. He's interested in projecting the exact thing he's talking about. So it's a little bit of a misnomer to call him an impressionist because he's interested in creating a precise impression in your mind. In this case, in the children's corner, Debussy is painting a picture of his daughter, whose name was Shushu, that's what he called her. Um, he did not have his daughter until he was, he and his wife were in their 40s. And he wrote that he was so overwhelmed with joy, he never expected it. Um, and he became a really doting and devoted father to this girl. The Children's Corner comes from this um, love that he has for her, and I consider the Children's Corner to be one of the very best pieces that Debussy ever wrote, because every note is filled with intense love for her. I'm going to explain each movement as we go along, and I hope that you'll enjoy the pieces that, that I'm playing for you. The first is called Dr. Gravis ad Parnassum, which is a kind of joke on piano exercises. I'm sure that we've all, who have studied piano, have had to, to suffer through kind of thing. I certainly make my students suffer for that. In any case, um, they, Debussy is imagining Shushu, who was born in 1905 at the time that he wrote this piece. He's imagining her, you know, as a five-year-old girl, six-year-old girl, having to practice very diligently as, as she plays. But in this piece, Dr. Carlos Alpernas, um, she becomes a little distracted. She gets to a certain point. practices a little bit more and it becomes hard. She kind of hangs her tongue out and so forth and so on. And then in the middle she starts to daydream a little bit and she says, oh, it's so hard, why do I have to practice? Towards the end of the piece she gets faster and faster because it is the end of the piece and she can go out and play at the end. Very carefully turns out the light and the lamp, and it's just. 
very, very careful because all parents know that if the kid wakes up, they're not going back to sleep for four hours. <laughs> so he has to be very, very quiet. This is an instance of realism in this very beautiful impressionistic piece. The next piece, the serenade for the doll, I mean, needs no explanation. I'm sure she brought her doll to him one day and said, she wants a song. <laughs> so what he has to do is he takes out a little ukulele and starts to um, uh, improvise this beautiful serenade for the doll.
The next piece is a scene which might have appeared in Shushu's life. The snow is dancing. That appears in our life here in Michigan a lot, and it's great, I have to say. <laughs> Debussy does a wonderful job of um, uh, painting the snow all the way through, and the feelings sometimes you could imagine. Um, uh, Shushu has a lot of little toys that she's playing with. You'll meet some of them um, throughout in the rest. And I always imagine maybe that there's one of the little lambs from the next um, shepherd piece that I'll play for you. It's kind of lost in the snow here. You hear a little bit of plaintive crying. But it's very beautiful how Debussy makes the snow swirl. The next is pretty self-explanatory, The Little Shepherd, she must have had a doll who was a shepherd. Um, I adore this piece, I have to say, because you hear the sheep dancing around, and there are three sunsets.
The last piece is the most famous of the set. There is a trigger warning, I need to say. Um, it's a cakewalk, Gollywog's cakewalk, which is a dance from the American South, from the time of slavery. And in this dance, the slaves used to make fun of the slave owners by dancing in the most exaggerated fashion possible. Okay, that's what a cakewalk is. And Debussy got uh, acquainted with the cakewalk through vaudeville shows, which came to Paris in the early 1900s. Debussy takes this opportunity to use the cakewalk to make fun of one of his masters, Wagner, who as a German composer um, really represented all of German pride, economic pride, military pride, social pride, cultural pride, and it was sweeping Europe in 1905, and as we know, shortly thereafter led to World War I. Debussy, who loved Wagner when he was young, kind of became disenchanted with Wagner and decided to make fun of him in this piece by quoting a very, very famous opera, Tristan and Isolde, which starts like this. Tristan and Isolde is about the incredible um, uh, surpassing love and redeeming love between Tristan and Isolde. Um, redeeming even beyond death, in a sense. So it's very passionate. Debussy decides to write in this middle section um, a quote from this, the beginning of that opera, but he never can really find the final chord, okay? And then he laughs about it. You'll hear that. 